welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. It's so good to be here with you, isn't it? Welcome to this uh, second day, actually second week, not second day. To me, everything is in days. <laughs> second week in January being uh, January 12th. We're already in the middle of January and uh, time is flying by. Uh, I just did this and I remember something. So I'm going to um, show you a new technique. Uh, it's a simple technique, but do you know that when you snap your fingers, it can mean so many things. It can be cancel. It can be happy. It can be uh, a sound of music. And it can remind you of something because it's like, what was that thing? So in a way, snapping our fingers is the same as everything else in our life. So again, joining here with me, thank you so much for being on Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. It's so good having you here today's session is going to be just like this simply easily effortlessly talking about something that has come up and i have been questioned the difference between conscious and consciousness simply as a clinical hypnotherapist when a client comes in here, they have, if they have never experienced, if you've never experienced hypnosis, it's like wondering, having this uh, interpretation of what is going to happen and not knowing usually creates this discomfort because when we are not aware, when we don't know, right, we are hesitant. So most times there is this misconception of what hypnosis or hypnotherapy is all about. So today I wanted to give you simple techniques so you can discover not only what hypnosis is, how easy and effortless it is, but how you can, in the comfort of your home, experience the same thing. So for those of you who already know me, awesome thank you and you can just hashtag and say thank you i know you okay just let just say i know you or for those of you who are on replay hashtag replay or you can even simply just make a comment that have you ever experienced hypnosis yes no hashtag yes or hashtag no that's it because we go in and out of hypnosis every single day. Did you know that? Every time that you get up and you do your routines from the moment that you are off your bed and you take a shower and every one of us has a routine. How you take a shower, how you uh, dry yourself, if you like the uh, water, if it is hot, if it is lukewarm, and most times we interchange winter time we make it warmer summertime we make it cooler or there's people like me who truly enjoy hot showers so that routine in itself when we repeat it over and over it becomes embedded in our psyche in our daily life and it's the same thing it can be boring, but when we understand how our habits are formed, behaviors are done, and it doesn't matter if it is positive or negative, just like the post that I did this morning, if you haven't seen it, it's on my story. I usually take a beautiful hike and walk in the mornings with my dog. And there is this landing on this pathway that there's two trees. And it's so beautiful. Actually, it's picturesque. And 
we can look at it and see as a doorway to possibilities. Or someone can look at the same thing and say, it's obstructing my view, which both are correct. But how we perceive things, how we look at things is about us. The tree, the view, the pathway does not change. But our outlook and how we deal with things in life change. Right? And it can happen in an instant. We can have a whole different shift of perception and an idea can come and go. So for us to be conscious, in a way aware of the trees, the pathway, and even the view is different than standing there and saying, wow, there is a whole consciousness of the environment, the beauty, even as I am standing here being present, that awareness in itself and knowing that you are one with all God's creation, your own, the essence of who you are, that in itself, the mass is part of the consciousness. So being aware of your own feelings and as you are going from full alert consciousness, being conscious to a point that you drift into this calm napping position to a level of removing our critical factors which we all have from the moment we are born our critical factors are placed in there so our mind literally places our essence and all the senses and our critical factor being um analyzing and judging criticizing reasoning right that part also goes to rest and we tap into the subconscious level which is fully aware fully knowing and yet not fully alert which is right before sleep that is where you tap in to do the deeper work before you fall asleep. Now, hypnosis is to take you from this full alert, hesitant, doubting, to allowing, and allowing for you, for you to relax in mind and in body, and becoming more comfortable. That's it. And the moment you give yourself being open and comfortable to allowing yourself to imagine. And what a hypnotherapist does is helps you visualize certain things and bypass your analyzing, thinking, judging, criticizing part of you to just imagine. Because imagination, you can ask any, any successful person, any inventor, anyone who designs things, everything starts in an imagination before it becomes a pattern, before it becomes sealed, and trademarked and it becomes a real product because our thoughts and imaginations is what creates everything else. 
So in reality, our memory is everything that we have experienced. There is no way that you, I can ask you for you to imagine something that you have not seen or experienced. It's not in your box. It's not in the realm of you knowing. Even if it is for you to go Google and see a picture and read about it, then you go, okay, now I understand what you're talking about. But if you've never seen it, if you've never heard of it, if you've never experienced it, it is not part of your memory. And the same thing goes with our emotions. If someone has never experienced any of that, either love or hatred, they cannot understand what you feel. If they've never experienced being bullied, which is very rare nowadays, or anything, they have no concept. If someone has lived in um, the poor area of a town and they have no concept of how the rich live or the multimillionaires live or them having no concept of what does it take to live in a one bedroom home with five people in there. They know about it. They've heard about it but they've never experienced it. So it's not in their memory bank. And the same thing goes with our habits, our behaviors, and what we can relate to. So in a way, when you want to manifest something, and when it comes to your, because anything we want to, create in life and it's part of the consciousness it's we can create it we can manifest it and if we believe it it becomes reality you've heard that right so when you want to manifest a dream that you have a vision that you have all you have to do is say i manifest my dream not i will manifest i want to because want creates lack thereof i am manifesting and then you say what it is that you want remember when you say i don't know in a way it shuts down possibilities because if it is something that you have already experienced and you know it's already inside so i've had clients who come and say I cannot remember anything about my teenage years. I don't know what happened to 10 years of my life. Through hypnosis, we can easily guide them to a time and a place that perhaps for a good reason, they have shut down that memory or blocked it. Now, unless there is a dementia happening, our memory bank can easily travel to that time. And if there is a reason that we have shut it down, we can make it aware. That awareness is becoming conscious of that not necessarily doing something with it perhaps we don't need to do anything except become aware becoming conscious of what took place what happened and not necessarily do anything about it because once we open the doors once you have a better understanding just like those trees how you perceive it and how you look at it as a point of possibilities or a destruction and obstacle. Both of them are correct. Both are correct. 
depending on where you are in life. So no matter what, it is holding you safe. It is getting you open to put your feet, get your feet wet into a new possibility and saying, I'm willing. So I have brought this example many, many times. Hi, Elvira John. Many, many times that the person who goes into the ocean and goes to surf or even paddling, I hope they already have learned how to swim before they go paddle or even want to surf. Because if you don't know how to swim, I don't necessarily know that if they would be comfortable being in the ocean or on the lake, well, surfing, you need waves. So it has to be in the ocean. And for you to learn how to surf with the waves. And that's the entire thing. To go into hypnosis is so natural because you go in out of that every single day from the time that you sit in your car. Once you learn how to drive a car, you don't think about the gears. You don't think about how you put your foot on the pedal of either gas or the brake, because once you know it, it becomes automatic. You don't think about it twice, especially after a few months of driving. Now, the only thing that can stop and make you hesitant is if and when there was an accident or you've been in an accident and there is a part of the body way from shifting to blocks to possibilities. And it can happen with a snap of a finger. When we choose, because choices have so much power, because it is your choice, and no one can force you to making a shift, going through the doorway, or stopping. Two things are in place. Fear, which is sometimes false emotions appearing real, or love, which I like to call it possibilities and choices. Because at the end, it comes that no matter what is happening around the world, no matter what the media is saying, no matter what's outside of your body, your mind, your feelings, and physically, mentally, emotionally, everything else outside that affects you, and you react to it, indirectly and directly affects you. And it becomes very distracting, creating dis-ease, discomfort, anger, resentment. And then as it gets elevated, when you share it, the moment it comes out, they say, speak it to free it, right? But when we speak of things that are harmful, attacking, you're also attacking the person sitting next to you. Even though you're not attacking them, you are. So our words, our gestures, have direct and indirect consequences to our own well-being and our health. And I know there are so many who are suffering right now due to COVID for their health or the health of their loved ones, and they feel helpless. And my heart goes out to all 
over the weekend, I felt a cold, a discomfort in my body. And what I did the first thing, instead of taking medications, because I'm not for medications, the same way as I can hypnotize myself and have a root canal with no anesthesia, and five of them, I decided to do nothing but rest my body. And not only rest my body, but as I was resting, that I did an internal scan from the top of my head all the way down to my body, to my toes. And this is how hypnosis is. That my head and then what's right here. It is my brain, my mind, the left vortex, the right vortex, And then from here to my eyes, my eyebrows, my nose, all my senses. And doing a checkpoint of all my senses. Can I taste? Can I smell? And I took a little bit of a eucalyptus, smell it, and put a little bit of a eucalyptus and lavender oil in the palm of my hand and go like this and go, not only it opens all my nostrils, but opens up all my scent and sense of smell. And by doing that, allowing it to go all the way to the back of my throat, and as I drank lemon and water, warm water, saying thank you as I was nourishing it, nurturing my throat and saying thank you as I could swallow. Thank you, throat. Thank you to my body as I can still swallow. Do you see how simple, how detailed I became? And by doing that, I place my hand as if giving energy, loving energy, healing energy right here. And then very gently placing it upon my chest. And although my hands were cold, I asked my body to generate heat. And then when I felt the heat, I said, thank you. Now, the same can be reversed that when you feel so much cold, you can put rubbing alcohol in the palm of your hand and go like this and place that rubbing alcohol upon your chest, either with your fingers or with a small little towel. Put it in a rubbing alcohol, squeeze it, place it on your chest, and it will cool down your chest and take the heat off. And by doing so, you can also say thank you. Thank you not only for doing so, but how your body shifts the heat, the cold, by not only what is happening inside your body, but what you do to pamper, to appreciate, to accept, to nurture and nourish yourself. simple techniques and I did that the entire body just like scanning taking care of it and by the time I got to my toes I had already drifted into deep sleep yes so I started with pure awareness fully awake fully aware, tending to me, then to my body, then becoming more conscious of every nerve and every muscle, every organ, every tissue. And by giving more love and nurturing, slowly and slowly, gradually relaxed my body. And the hot water, the lemon, 
the eucalyptus, it all worked. A few hours later, as I came to full conscious awareness, it was absolutely wonderful because I felt so much better. And I repeated the same thing again later that evening. And by tending to me, I gave myself not only love, but I made my well-being number one. This can happen in a few moments. It can happen in me time because we all need me time to nurture. And you can do that within 10 minutes, being in the shower. And as the water comes trickling down from the top of your head, release and just ask your body to release any pain, any discomfort, or if there is a cry that you are crying, release that. Words of affirmation or anything that you are angry, hurting, release those and allow the water to cleanse, to wash away and clear everything. And just look down, turn around and see it all go down the drain. As a matter of fact, that's an incredible metaphor for you to utilize. So you see, the shift is not between, the shift is between you and yourself. And sometimes we forget the fight. He, he can do this and say, no, thank you. Because no, just like in marketing, just like in cold calling, no is as good of an answer as is yes. Hello, Liana. Hello, Mary Lou. Your birthday is coming up as well. I am grateful for this time with you because he'll talk Tuesdays. Now that it's, I'm starting my fifth year being live every week coming live and being present. I hope that my comments, my suggestions have been beneficial for you. And as always, I am here for you. You can always make comments and I will respond. You can ask me questions. I get so many emails, so many messages that most times people do not want everybody else to see. And I'm going to start responding to your emails without mentioning your name. Because you know what? I just received that email the other day and it was something. And they said, please do not mention my name if you talk about this. And starting next week, I'm going to do that. I'm going to give some of the solutions because when I gave my thoughts, my idea of how it can be resolved, she said it was one of the best answers that she has had. So with her permission, I will talk about it next week. And by all means, I am opening this up to you, all my viewers, no matter where you are, that I am here for you. And if I don't know the answer, I will find it for you. Last but not least, I have this saying that I, I put it in my book and I want to share it with you. It's in my book, The Heal Thy Mind Body, and says the people of uh, People, uh, as people, we are in a relationship with, the people we are in relationship with are always a mirror, reflecting our own beliefs. And simultaneously, we are mirrors reflecting their beliefs. 
So a relationship is one of the most powerful true tools for growth. And if we look honestly at our relationships, we can see so much about how we have created them. Which is true. I think we find and attract the people around us. And as in the Indian philosophy with one of the gurus that I also listen to, follow and meditate with, says that the people in our relationship, when there is a dis, uh, discomfort or disagreement or even an argument or a fight, it's not for you to burn the bridges and walk out, but see either with them or on your own on your own doesn't you don't have to stay there what you learned about yourself from that relationship because sometimes we do have to protect ourselves to sever certain relationships but then look at it and see how you grew and what was the benefit, either good or bad, how it affected you, what made, what difference it made within you, and how you can make that better for yourself. And you know, that's exactly what I do. My technique of evoking and helping you evoke and just being conscious of something not necessarily doing something about it is the beginning of a change until you come to embrace and accept the reality to where you are so that you can evolve to the next level to what you want and you step into it all that because you do matter so thank you for being here and I hope today's message was beneficial to you and as always you can always reach me at healwithin.com lisa b at healwithin.com or you can schedule a complimentary session with me just go to my website healwithin.com and as always I'm here for you and ladies remember you can join Chris and I on the original and find us as we talk about no nonsense, candid talks about women and women's wellness. Until next week, I bid you goodbye and thank you for being here. God bless you and may the universal light surround you. Bye bye. Thank you for being here. If you want to check out some of the testimonials that I've got, click right here. But if you want to go back and watch other videos from a week ago, two weeks ago, even a year ago, 